And I want to talk to you tonight just briefly about the God who helps us. And I want us to look at an incredibly encouraging passage in Isaiah. In fact, for a lot of people who maybe haven't read a lot of Isaiah, invariably people have either heard these verses or maybe referenced them. Maybe somebody sent you a verse sometime in a card and they wrote it down and it was Isaiah and it was Isaiah 41, usually verse 10. And you're like, wow, that's such a cool verse. And so I want to talk to you about this passage because it speaks of God's commitment to us, especially in those times when we can't see what he's doing. Maybe we don't understand what he's doing. Perhaps you're in that season tonight where things are happening in your life and you're like, what's up with that? And you're wondering, God, listen, I've been praying about this, but now maybe it's gotten worse, or, or maybe it seems nothing has happened, and you're seeking the Lord, but it's a, a time when, when it just seems God's not helping you. Now, just by way of background, before we look at these verses in Isaiah, and we're going to look at Isaiah 40 and Isaiah 41, uh, this whole section is called by theologians the consolation of Zion or the comfort of God's people. And it gives us a couple of uh, big picture truths about God and then some uh, other things that we'll notice as well. The first one is this, that our God is the creator God. And it's very, very important for you and I to remember that because when we, when we realize the magnitude of creation, and that we're talking to the God, that our God is the God who created everything. He spoke it into existence. And it happened. And he sustains it every single day. He didn't just start it and spin it out there, but he is now sustaining it. Look at this in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 25. And this is all a reminder to Israel, to God's people, to you and I tonight. To whom will you compare me or who is my equal? Who can compare with God? Who can equal God? Says the Holy One. Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Tonight when you go outside, you get away from the church parking lot and the lights there. Hopefully you can get outside, you can look up to the sky And you can do what he's saying. Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. The the multiplied billions of stars. And God knows every one of them. God has a name for every one of them. God guides every one of them in, in its own unique trajectory. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Do you know why the stars do what the stars do? It's not because stars do that. It's not just because of gravitational pull that is exerted by the different stars and planets, but underneath that and behind all of that, it's because of his mighty strength. It's because of his power. If you want to know how powerful God is, he's powerful enough to keep billions of stars and planets in billions of galaxies all working in perfect synchronization continually. That's his power. Now, what's interesting, and the point of the passage is this, even in the midst of sustaining his creation on that scale, are you ready for this? His people are his central concern. His big concern is not Alpha Centauri and what it's doing. His biggest concern is you and how you're doing. He's a God who orders our steps and delights in the detail of our lives. He's aware, he's watching. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're going through. He's aware totally. 
Verse 27, why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Why do you say, God, you don't even care about me? That's what God is asking. How could you ever say it? Now, I know we can have those feelings, but God is saying, listen, don't ever doubt my care for you, for the things you're going through, for the things you're experiencing, whether those things are emotional, whether those things are physical, whether those things are spiritual, whether those things are financial, wh whether those things are relational. God cares, God's involved, God knows, God sees. The second thing God wants us to know is he's close to his people. So he's the creator of everything, but he's big enough to create everything, but he's personal enough to be close to his people. It's his heart to do that. You come into chapter 41, and here's what God says. And I wish we could do the whole chapter, but we're just going to pick a small section of it. But it's amazing. I have chosen you. I want you to stop and think about that for a moment. God chose you. God said, I want him and I want her. You know, sometimes people think, well, I can understand how God would choose that person, or I can see why God likes them. You know, that's, they have this, they have that, they do this, they do that. No, no, God chose you. And I've not rejected you. Because see, what happens is when we go through times of difficulty or when we go through times of delay where the answer doesn't come either in the way or in the timing we expected it, then invariably, if we don't have the maturity of faith to keep trusting God, if we don't have the experience or the track record to say, God, I know you're going to help me because you help me there, you help me there, you help me there, you help me there. People can find themselves saying, well, he must have rejected me. And he says, I haven't rejected you. In fact, look at it in verse 10. So do not fear. He's not rejected you, he's chosen you. So don't be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Now I want to highlight some things in those verses. It's not complicated and I don't want to take a long time with it because really the most important thing we can do is receive that scripture, believe it, and then go to the Lord with what we need. Three things I want to point out. Number one, God is with you. Look at it in verse 10. So do not fear. I am with you. Whatever you're facing in life, don't be afraid. No matter what your problem, you say, but it's huge. The doctor says there's no answer. Don't be afraid. I don't know where I'm going to get the money to pay that bill. Don't be afraid. If my husband leaves me, I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't be afraid. My teenager is angry, won't talk to me, and I'm losing. Don't be afraid. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. I'm they're reorganized. Don't be afraid. Why? 
God isn't saying, well, just ignore it. God isn't saying, well, just put it out of your mind. No, God is saying, you don't have to be afraid. Why? Because I am with you. God is with you. God is with you at work. God is with, with you at home. God will be with you at the doctor's office. God will be with you in the, in the sick bed. God will, God's with you. He's right there. And because of that, you don't have to be afraid. There's a second thing. God is with you, and God is helping you. Look at it in verse 10. Do not be dismayed. And that could be, don't be discouraged, or it could be, don't be anxious. Don't be worried. Don't, don't let anxiety fill your heart. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Whatever you're facing, don't be afraid because God is going to be with you. You say, well, how is God going to be with me? Look at it. I will strengthen you. That's one way God's going to be with you. What are we talking about when we talk about God strengthening us? We're talking about God making you strong enough to do what you would never have been able to do on your own. Sometimes we're like, well, I just don't have the capacity to do that. I don't have the strength to do that. I don't have the energy to do that. I don't have the knowledge to do that. I don't have the ability to do that. No, he's going to strengthen you so that you and I, in whatever situation we're in, he's going to give us the strength that we need to do what needs to be done. And it won't be our strength. It will be his strength. It doesn't matter if you don't have the strength. In fact, that maybe is even better because then when he gives you the strength, You'll know it's his strength. He's going to be with us by strengthening us and help you. I will help you. Whatever you need, he'll help you. You say, what does that look like? Um, well, you need wisdom, he'll help you. You need direction, he'll help you. You need favor with people, he'll help you. You need relief from the pressure, he'll help you. You need whatever it is that you would need. You, you need resource because you've got bills you can't, he will help you. You need healing, he will help you. He's a God who helps people. He'll help you. And then, I will uphold you. In other words, I'll support you, I'll steady you. I'll, if necessary, carry you. The message says this, I'll hold you steady, keep a firm grip on you. So, God is with you, God is helping you. Now listen to this, God is fighting for you. Amen. He's fighting for you. Isaiah 41, 13, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Uh, do you realize how many times I will help you, I will help you, I will help you? You know, sometimes we have to hear it over and over again, and God's saying, listen, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Why? I will help you, I will help you, I will help you, and he will help us in the most powerful yet gentle ways. I'm going to ask my granddaughter, Evelyn, to come on up here. Give Evelyn a hand. She's, she's a dolly. All right, Miss Evelyn Grace. So she's going to help me illustrate this. Stand right over here, okay? You can, we're going to let you stand right by it, okay? You'll notice it says in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 13, the first part of the verse, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand. Evelyn, do you know which hand's your right hand? Wave your right hand at everybody. Okay, that's your right hand. So God says, I'll take hold of your right hand. It's, it's very, very interesting because he says in verse 10 earlier, three verses earlier, he said, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So his right hand takes hold of our right hand. And so guess what? He's got your back. He's, 
He's looking, you know, you got enemies chasing you. You got something chasing you down. You're worried about what's coming up behind you. You're afraid of that. Well, he's, he's got you right here. You're afraid that maybe they're going to come from the front. Well, he's got that. Now watch this. We skipped verses 11 and 12. See all your angry enemies. They lie there confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. You will look in vain for those who tried to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. Why? Because he's got your right hand. And so while he's holding your hand, he's fighting your enemies. How many know God's got a long reach and he can pull us close to him? Listen, he's holding us like this, but he's fighting. Some of you have enemies. You have people who hate you. You have people who are coming after you and God's got you like this and he's got your back. And then if they're coming this way, God, he's just going before you and he's like, I've got you. I've got you, baby. I've got you. You don't have to worry about it. You can trust me I'm gonna fight for you and whatever he's got to do the right hand is the hand of favor the left hand he's coming after them he's gonna take care of whatever whoever however and if you're weary he'll uphold you with his righteous right hand if necessary, he will carry you every step of the way, still fighting. You know, listen, some of you feel like God's just left you out there. And the fact of the matter, no, he's carrying you. He's upholding you. You can trust him. He loves you. Amen. You're beautiful, baby. Some of you desperately needed to hear that tonight. That the God of the universe, the God we serve, the God we've come tonight to worship, the God that this church seeks to exalt and to glorify and to share the world, the news about him, to share with the world the news about him. That God is the creator God and you're not incidental to his creation. You're the center of his focus, even in the midst of all of his creation. He's not forgotten you. Why do you say, my way is forgotten? Oh, Jacob. Listen, tonight maybe you came in here and you feel like God, for some reason, doesn't value you as much as he values somebody else or that maybe he's forgotten you. Nothing could be farther from the truth. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. His eye is on you. He cares for you. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. He's with you. He's helping you. And he's fighting for you. And you might not be able to see it tonight. And you may not be able to understand it. But it's happening nonetheless. And he's closer than you think. And he loves you more than you can imagine.